Hi, Rebecca Magic here. Thank you for tuning in. So if you saw the title, the title is How to Use Tarot to Fulfill Your Life's Purpose. And I can imagine that would be very intriguing to most of us, right? Because um, that's why we're here. We want to feel fulfilled. We want to know that we are aligning our path with our life's mission and purpose. <clears throat> and so... More specifically, this video is going to be about the north and south nodes in astrology. If you don't know yours yet, I encourage you to look it up. But what these nodes represent, the south node, is who you came here comfortably as in this life. Perhaps you've lived many lifetimes in this energy, whatever that sign is, mine is cancer. Um, but you have lived your most recent lifetime in this energy, perhaps even this one. Usually this one as well. We come into the world with our south node. So, I came into this world very much as a cancer. Nurturer, feminine, mother, dependent, homemaker. Uh, all about the family. And my north node would be the direct opposite sign, because it always is. So my north node is Capricorn. Masculine, provider, leader direction, purpose. So you can see the polarity between these two. Now, because we live in a reality of polarity, this dualistic reality, we are always seeking that balance. All of the lessons being presented to us are ultimately for us to find that balance so that we can balance ourselves within and manifest in outer world from this balanced, harmonious place. And in doing so individually, we collectively create and manifest a whole new world that is more healed, more in reflection of our wholeness and divine perfection. And so I wanted to talk about how we can use the major arcana of the tarot deck to move through this journey um, from our south node to our north node, to finding our direction, to fulfilling our purpose, why we are here. Now, the major arcana means the major secrets of the tarot deck. There is also the minor arcana, which makes up the rest of the deck, and those are the smaller secrets. We are only going to talk about the major arcana right now. All of the cards in the deck, the major and minor arcana, are all of the archetypes, all of the faces of the godhead, the multiplicity within the one. And all of these characteristics are within us and they can be called upon when necessary to move through any experience in our life. All of the faces contain lessons, um, understandings, truths for whatever experience we're going through. The major arcana is pretty much a story from the dark to the light. It goes from zero, the fool, to 21. So altogether there are 22 cards. The 21st card being the world. So it's full culmination of all of that inner work. It's wholeness in this material world in reflection of the wholeness on the inner realm. And so starting with the fool, and I'll show you what the fool looks like. It's the zero card because zero is the number of unlimited potential. The fool is ultimate tr trust, new beginnings, faith, leap of faith. Um, the fool has everything he needs in his pouch to go forward, all of the tools that he needs. The rose represents purity and innocence. He's about to step off the cliff and into the world with his ally, this dog here. The sun is shining down upon him, symbolizing source. He's leaving from the mountains, which symbolizes coming down from the heavens, from the spirit realm. Um, he's also looking up to the sky, which represents looking towards spirit, keeping his mind, his his third eye on source always knowing where he's coming from. And this is one of the few major arcana cards I picked today to show you a little bit how you can use these archetypes to move through this process of learning about your direction and how to best embody those traits that will get you there. So anybody on this journey to more awareness, to self-realization, should keep the fool at the forefront of their mind. Because this is where we all begin. This is knowing and trust in our unlimited source, in our unlimited potential. So that one's quite obvious why I chose it. Then we have the Wheel of Fortune. There, it's First of all, it's the 10th card. 10 is the number of endings and new beginnings. Uh, the wheel is like the wheel of karma, the great wheel in the sky. There are always cycles, new cycles, endings and new beginnings in life. 
And so I chose this one on our path to understanding our south and north nodes so that we can remember there is always going to be a new cycle. We are here to initiate this new cycle. I chose the world, the final card from the story of the darkness to the light, the fool's journey. She is the full culmination of all of those inner efforts uh, to heal. She is the full power and enlightenment. And I chose this because when we achieve the balance between our south node and north node, um, we will look like this. We'll feel like this. We'll feel very whole. We will materialize a reality that represents this wholeness that we feel from our core and all the work that we've done. So it's never about rejecting who we are or who we came here as. We need to understand ourselves without judgment first to really be able to move forward. So the judgment card, again, is another card we can pull from the major arcana because that is very a very important part of this process. We need to fully allow ourselves to be who we came here as. You know, almost, in, in, it could even manifest in an immature or chaotic way because we at least just need to let it flow, however unhealed, so that we can get a very detached look at it, a very logical perspective on who we came here as. Not judging ourselves, but being really open to seeing our purest reflection. So then we can move forward and do the healing that we need to do. So that is very much the judgment card as well, which is in the deck. But this world, so we don't want to just throw out our south node. We want to always work with the energy present and transform it. Um, you, it. It's not going to do anything for us if we resist what is, especially when it comes to who we are and who we came here to be. So you want to work with your south node to find the balance and move toward your north node. So you want to work with them together to achieve this wholeness. Another card I chose was the hanged man. We can meditate on the hanged man to remember to remain open, to see things from a different perspective, to create that illumination. The way we illuminate the mind is to see things from that new angle, to remain open to new perspectives, to see things differently than we've seen it before. And this is very much why we are here and how we are moving from the south node to the north node. It's so that we can gain new perspective and achieve balance between those two polarities. So those are just four... And I mentioned judgment, so technically five of the major arcana cards we can use on this journey from the south to the north node or this journey of alchemizing, you know, who we came here as to who we came here to be, fulfilling our purpose. So I'm going to give some examples of how we can dive a little further deeply into this process, and I'm going to use myself as an example. I am a Cancer south node and a Capricorn north node, so right away you see the feminine south and the masculine north. I came here as a caretaker, as a nurturer, as a dependent, as a mother type energy, that mother archetype, very Cancerian qualities, right? And so to seek out that balance, I came here to learn the lessons of Capricorn, independence, leader, direction, detachment, focus, drive. So you can see right away that I'm needing to learn about balance of polarities, balance of the masculine and feminine polarities to be specific. Um, I chose six cards from the Major Arcana to represent some characteristics that could help me on my individual journey. The first one I chose was Justice. Because there are the pillars to represent the masculine and feminine and polarities in general, and then the balance of those. And I believe that justice is also a major card of balancing out karma and finding that place of wholeness so that we can move forward from there. I do have a couple of videos specifically about the justice card on my YouTube channel, Rebecca Magic Channeling, and also on my Facebook, Rebecca Magic Channeling. So check that out if you haven't yet, because this is yet another one, uh, like all of the major arcana, that we should keep at the forefront of our mind going through any experience. And then another card I chose for South Node Cancer, North Node Capricorn was Temperance. Again, this is a great card for anyone on this specific mission of fulfilling purpose or whatever mission you're going through in life. It's really a card of meaning and purpose and trust in divine order and divine balance. So, of course, you can see how this one would apply to many things, as the major arcana are all the cards that we should really always have with us at the front of our tool belt. 
But I chose this one specifically for Capricorn North Node because um, Capricorn, wherever you are in your 10th house is also really going to affect your North Node because this is a house of purpose and career and direction. And my 10th house also happens to be in Capricorn. So this card is very relevant to my situation of meaning and purpose and direction. So I really wanted to keep this one in mind on my personal journey of moving toward that uh, Capricorn North Node, trusting that. That is my purpose and that is my direction. Then I chose the moon as a very clear representation of my south node, Cancer, because Cancer is ruled by the moon. So femininity, the shadow work, the subconscious. I really saw this one as being helpful on my journey because it can help me to remember to go deep to illuminate those innermost parts of myself and my psyche to really do that healing so that I can create space to embody those more masculine energies and move more from the moon toward the sun. The next one I chose was strength because as you can see it's a woman petting the lion. So this one I really chose to help me understand the balance between my south and north node because we really want to use those qualities we came here with to help us get to the qualities we came here to learn. This is the key, the alchemical key to moving forward with the most grace and ease on our path of fulfilling our individual mission here. And so I thought, well, this is perfect because I can find that strength and that direction and that masculinity through my vulnerability and with my intuition, intuitive strength. That is a very clear example of um, a positive way to blend the Cancer South Node and the Capricorn North Node. Strength and softness, the truest strength. And then I chose the Empress. Again, very Cancerian because she represents that femininity, that feminine side of us, Mother Nature. Um, as you can see, the nature all around her and the river. And she's sitting on the cushions and the velvets, representing beauty. She's ruled by Venus, beauty, grace, creativity, romance, love. And so I came here very much as the Empress, very comfortable in my mother-like qualities and in my Cancerian and uh, feminine qualities. But the shadow side of this card is, are you putting others' needs before your own too much? Are you becoming overwhelmed in this role? And if I do live too much in my south node, then I won't be learning the lessons that I came here to learn. So I chose this card to remind me that I am complete within this role and it's time to move on to the next one, which I could have also chosen that one to show you, but I could just briefly say the next one is the number four, which is the emperor, which is moving into my masculine, my more direct qualities. So I chose this to show myself, okay, you've got this, you're comfortable on this throne, it's time to move ahead. I also chose the lovers as the final card for my journey from Cancer South Node to Capricorn North Node because the Cancer South Node and the Capricorn North Node very much represent this opposition, this struggle between choosing one or the other. Um, and this is the card of choosing between two different attractions, two different things, and making sure you're always choosing the right choice, the one that is going to bring the most uh, sustainable growth. And so I chose this card to remind me that the ability to choose the right path is always within me. And I know that in any given moment, I may need to be more one or the other. I may need to be more in my feminine or my masculine, my Cancer South or my Capricorn North. And I chose this to, you know, as my prayer that... You know, may I always embody the one that I'm needing to embody in any given moment. May I always choose the right balance. May I always choose the right one in any moments to achieve that full picture of balance. Knowing that they really work together. So as you can see, the major arcana alone, let alone the rest of the deck. I mean, the rest of the deck we can go even deeper, which I will be making more videos about in the future. But just learning about the major arcana reveals the major secrets. Their major revelations, their tools, allies, archetypes that we can embody, lessons that we can learn to help us most efficiently and gracefully move through any experience. And applying them to something so important as our life's purpose can be a very practical way of achieving that success and feeling that fulfillment and really understanding and moving forward in our mission here. And so using it in combination with the other spiritual arts like astrology or numerology 
can be incredibly transformative. So if you have any questions about your North and South node and maybe applying the major arcana to your individual path, I am happy to help you write out an affirmational story to most efficiently choose an order of these cards to move forward on your path for why you are here, what you are here to learn. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below. You can also private message me. My contact info is also on my Facebook page, Rebecca Magic Channeling. I do have a few new videos posted up uh, from this past week, so check them out if you haven't yet. They are on Facebook. They are also on my YouTube channel. The link, channel, the link is on my Facebook. So check those out. Let me know what you think. And again, I'd love to hear your questions and help you on your own journey by using the tarot as the most awesome magical tool. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. Uh, this was a very special topic to me. I hope that you gained some valuable insight from it. I appreciate you, and I thank you for doing the work on your soul's mission here now.